Hi everybody, it's Miss Toth here. I sure miss your face. I thought maybe some of you might miss mine too, so uh, I thought I would record myself for a few activities during the week and you can take a look at my funny face while I'm doing things, okay? Uh, some of you know that I was able to run very quickly into the school and pick up some things. And one thing I made sure to pick up was the book, uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. So we had been reading this in the classroom and we only were about four chapters away from finishing it. I thought what we could do is I will continue to read the story to you and while I'm reading to you, you can work on the visualization. So remember visualization is making pictures in your mind, right? So we're thinking about all those big words, those words that pop, uh, all the details that the author is giving us that makes the reading and those words come to life. So I'm going to make a funny face. You're going to pause me. When I am paused, you are going to go get your tools. You need to have something to write with, maybe a piece of paper, or if you're using a whiteboard, you can go and do that too. Okay, you can get your colors as well if you like to. Are you ready? I'm going to make a funny face. All right, are we back now? Great. In front of you, you need to have your tools ready. You have a pencil, a piece of paper, a pen, colors, and your good listening ears. So we're on chapter 26 right now. I'm going to start reading and you can start to listen. Listen along. Here we go. When we left off, Charlie and his grandpa were going into the television room with Willy Wonka, Mike TV, and his family. So... We did start off by talking about what the TV room looked like, but I'm going to read this whole part again. This is about a four or five page chapter, so get yourself comfortable. Here we go. The Television Chocolate Room, Chapter 26. The TV family, together with Charlie and Grandpa Joe, stepped out of the elevator into a room so dazzlingly bright and dazzling, dazzlingly, I can't say that word, uh, white, that they screwed up their eyes in pain and stopped walking. Mr. Wonka handed each of them a pair of dark glasses and said, put these on quick and don't take them off in here, whatever you do. This light could blind you. As soon as Charlie had his dark glasses on, he was able to look around in comfort. He saw a long, narrow room. The room was painted white all over. Even the floor was white, and there wasn't a speck of dust anywhere. From the ceiling, huge lights hung down and bathed the room in a brilliant white-blue light. The room was completely bare except at the far end. At one end, of, one of these ends, there was an enormous camera on wheels, and a whole army of Oompa Loompas was clustering around it, oiling its joints and adjusting its knobs and polishing its great glass lens. The Oompa Loompas were all dressed in the most extraordinary way. They were wearing bright red spacesuits, complete with helmets and goggles. At least they look like spacesuits. And they were working in complete silence. Watching them, Charlie experienced a queer sense of danger. There was something dangerous about this whole business, and the Oompa Loompas knew it. There was no chattering or singing amongst them here, and they moved about over the huge black camera slowly and carefully in their scarlet, scarlet space suits. At the other end of the room, about 50 paces away from the camera, a single Oompa Loompa, also wearing a space suit, was sitting at a black table, gazing at the screen of a very large television set. Here we go, cried Mr. Wonka, hopping up and down with excitement. This is the testing room of my very latest and greatest invention, television chocolate. But what is television chocolate, asked Mike TV. Oh, good heavens, child, stop interrupting me, said Mr. Wonka. It works by television. I don't like television myself. I suppose it's all right in small doses, but children never seem to be able to take it in small doses. Hmm. They want to sit there all day long, staring and staring at the screen. That's happening in my house. I don't know about you. That's me, said Mike TV. Ah, said Mr. TV. Stop talking. Thank you, said Mr. Wonka. I shall now tell you how this amazing television set of mine works. But first of all, do you know 
how ordinary television works. It is very simple. At one end, where the picture is being taken, you have a large movie camera and you start photographing something. The photographs are then split up into millions of tiny little pieces, which are so small that you can't see them. And these little pieces are shot out into the sky by electricity. In the sky, they go whizzing around all over the place until suddenly they hit the antenna on the roof of somebody's house. Then they go flashing down the wire that leads right into the back of the television set and in there they get jiggled and juggled around until at last every single one of those millions of tiny pieces is fitted back into its right place. Just like a jigsaw puzzle and presto, the photograph appears on the screen. That isn't exactly how it works, Mike TV said. I'm a little deaf in my left ear, Mr. Wonka said. You must forgive me if I don't hear everything you say. I said it isn't exactly how it works, shouted Mike TV. You're a nice boy, said Mr. Wonka, but you talk too much. Now then, the very first time I saw ordinary television working, I was struck by a tremendous idea. Look here, I shouted, if these people can break up a photograph into millions of pieces and send the pieces whizzing through the air and then put them together again at the other end, why can't I do the same thing with a bar of chocolate? Why can't I send a real bar of chocolate whizzing through the air in tiny pieces and put the pieces back together at the other end, all ready to be eaten? Impossible, said Mike TV. You think so, cried Mr. Wonka. Well, watch this. I shall now send the bar of my very best chocolate from one end of this room to the other by television. Get ready. There, bring in the chocolate. Immediately, six Oompa Loompas marched forward, carrying on their shoulders the most enormous bar of chocolate Charlie had ever seen. It was about the size of the mattress he slept on at home. Oh, can you imagine chocolate that big? It has to be big, Mr. Walker explained, because whenever you send something by television, it always comes out much smaller than it is when it went in. Even with ordinary television, when you photograph a big man, he never comes out on your screen any taller than a pencil, does he? Here we go then, get ready. No, 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 stop! Hold everything, you there, Mike TV. Stand back. You are too close to the camera. There are dangerous rays coming out of that thing. They could break you up into millions of tiny pieces in one second. That's why the employees are wearing space suits. Those suits protect them. All right. Oh, that's better. Now then, switch on. One of the Oompa Loompas caught hold of a large switch and pulled it down. There was a blinding flash. The chocolate's gone, shouted Grandpa Joe, waving his arms. He was quite, quite right. The whole enormous bar of chocolate <coughs> disappeared completely into thin air. It's on its way, cried Mr. Wonka. It's now rushing through the air above our heads in a million tiny pieces. Quick, come over here. He dashed over to the other end of the room where the large television set was waiting, and the others followed him. Watch the screen, he cried. Here it comes, look. <coughs> Sorry. The screen flickered and lit up, then suddenly a small bar of chocolate appeared in the middle of the screen. Take it, shouted Mr. Walker, growing more and more excited. How can you take it, asked Mike TV, laughing. It's just a picture on a television screen. <coughs> Charlie Bucket, cried Mr. Walker. You take it. Reach out and grab it. Charlie put out his hand and touched the screen. And suddenly, miraculously, the bar of chocolate came away in his fingers. He was so surprised, he nearly dropped it. Eat it, <coughs> shouted Mr. Wonka. Go ahead and eat it. <coughs> It'll be delicious. It's the same bar. It's gotten smaller on the journey. That's all. That's absolutely fantastic, gasped Grandpa Joe. It's, it's a miracle. Just imagine, cried Mr. Wonka, when I start using this across the country, you'll be sitting at home watching television and suddenly a commercial will flash on to the screen and a voice will say, eat Wonka's chocolates. They're the best in the world. If you don't believe us, try one for yourself now. You simply reach out and take one. How about that, eh? Oh, terrific cried Grandpa Joe. It will change the world. And that's the end of the chapter. Now, what I want you to do with your parents' permission is ask them when you're done your drawing. If you can take a picture of it, email it to me.
and I'll post it on our website for other people to see your visualization activity. All right, it was so good reading with you today, and I hope you have a great day. I'll talk to you soon.